Um, hello, is, uh, is anybody on the call? Okay. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. Oh God. Um, hi. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm my God, I'm so sorry. I, uh, no, no, don't be sorry. You're, you're fine. You're, you're uh, supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually a little late. I, no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. I, uh, hmm. I'm the only one so far. Yeah. Yeah. This was this was supposed to start at seven, right? Um, I, I think, but uh, Gina's the one who told me the time, so. Oh. 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 Um, Roy, listen. Um, I don't want to burden you with anything. I mean, yes. you are new to the group, oh. and. Wait, sorry, sorry. I think that I think that there's a delay. Oh, oh, um. Well, uh, I was just saying that I uh, maybe there's some stuff you should know about us all. There's just um, there's some tension between Gina and I right now. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's um, it's just a long story. Yeah, I I kind of sensed something during the last meeting, actually. Yeah, um, but don't worry about it. I'm I'm sure it's going to work out eventually. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, can I just? Can I just say something? Um, sure. I personally think you should just let the truth out. It'll be much better that way. What? Really, Clara? I guess that right away, it, it's so obvious. Um, excuse and, and me. I don't. I don't think you have anything to be embarrassed about. Um, it's, wait. I mean, so what, it's what are you? And you are who you are. And and. Uh, what, 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> you're, you're really into Allison. It was like it was like billboard obvious. Just be open about it. I. If there's tension, there's tension. But it's it's better to just live your truth and have. Everybody know. Oh, well, um, yes. Yes, I am really into Allison. <laughs> um, people, uh, people know that, actually. Oh. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Then there must... Mm, there must be tension because of the other thing you're hiding, then. Um, what other thing? That you're a ghost. What? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, when you were telling your story about the Pittsburgh Playhouse ghost, it was pretty clear you were talking about yourself. So I took a screenshot, and yeah, you have an orb. <laughs> oh, I have an orb. Yep. Orbs don't lie. Every ghost has one. 
I didn't know my orb would show up in screenshots. Yeah, it does, which is something to keep in mind for future reference. Thanks. <laughs> Ima, I really thought the meeting would start by now. Allison said she was she's going out for a walk, but she's not back yet, and she's not answering my texts. And uh, Gina's not talking to me, so I don't know what's happening. I, I just, um, I feel so alone. Well, we, we could just start the meeting without them. Oh, you, you, you think that would be okay? <laughs> yeah, why not? I actually have a ton of questions for you. I, I've never interviewed a ghost before. <laughs> oh, well, cool. I've, um, I've never been interviewed by a ghost enthusiast. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually so glad that this is, this is out in the open now. I, I've been dying to talk to you about, about, ectoplasm and, and history and existing outside the spatio-temporal plane? It's... <laughs> oh, shit! Well, uh, fire away. Actually, actually, can we move this to Google Hangouts? Live webinar isn't really my favorite format. You know what? <laughs> Me neither. Isn't it so basic? Just even more basic than Microsoft Teams. Yes. Let's get out of these boxes. Totally. I'll email you a link. <laughs> oh, thank God she's gone. Hey, girl, you ready for this? Oh, yeah, I'm hiding in my bedroom from Clara. I'm trying to keep my voice down. I can't believe you're making me ice her out of this meeting. Don't say her name. And I'm sorry, what am I supposed to do? Just invite her to the seance for the person she killed? Too bad Ward didn't stick around. He'd be great for this. I just don't know the, how this is going to work, Gina. You really just expect me to accept all of this? Just act like it didn't happen? It's just that all the paranormal experts in this town suck. Remember when I tried to get someone to exercise Clara and it didn't work? What did I say about saying her name? Jesus, sorry, I forgot. If you feel the impulse to say the name, let you say instead, the bitch ghost who murdered my brother. Right. Well, they couldn't get that ghost bitch who murdered your brother to go away. They probably won't be able to get Jeff back. He's my brother, Allison. I'm not just going to leave him behind. Well, maybe he doesn't want to come back. Maybe he's happy in the afterworld. Maybe he's like eating chips and watching the pens game right now. If that's all that he's doing, he can totally do that here. We have a giant TV. Well, even if this mystic Matt guy does get in contact with Jeff, um, how do you know that he's for real? I bet he makes up a bunch of bullshit all the time. He sounds like a total quack. He is not. You didn't see his show last time. He was totally talking to everybody's dead relatives. Really? He's the real deal. People were crying buckets. Because they heard from their dead relatives. Somebody told me it was the most moving experience they'd ever have in their lives. And now they believe that there's life after death and they now believe in God all because of Mystic Matt. Well, he is not even here. Shouldn't he be here by now? Let's just give up on him. Oh, hi, ladies. Uh, everyone hear me? This is him. He doesn't look like a fortune teller. What? Sorry? Oh, that's, that's not Mystic Matt. That's Josh. He's our new recruit. <laughs> Excuse me? You added another member of Yins Are Scared and didn't tell me. Shouldn't we have held a vote or something? Allison, we need to have three people to make a quorum. Roy ditched the chat, and it's not like Rachel's coming back anytime soon now that she's in LA having a fancy muddling career. <laughs> this guy's way better. He was a panelist on the Pittsburgh Ghost Symposium I went to. You went to a symposium? I can do fancy things. Anyways, he's one of us now. Happy to be part of the gang. So cute. 
Yeah, well, Mystic Matt's still not here. He's on his way. You'll you'll know him the moment you see him. He's always wearing this black robe, and he gives off a mystical aura of profound, otherworldly wisdom. Mm, totally. I'm sure. God, I'm so not drunk enough for this. I can't believe I have to fake my way through another goddamn seance tonight. You'd think by now they just realize I make up bullshit about dead people. See? Mystic Matt? Yeah? Oh, shit. Wait, you can hear me? Um, yeah. Oh, fuck. I thought I was on mute. Yeah, I was just kidding. <laughs> I'm a full of otherworldly uh, stuff tonight. Really profound aura going on. You are lying. <sighs> End the call, Gina. Damn it, Mystic Matt. I need you to take this seriously. Remember last time that guy's grandfather was calling to you and you had this whole revelation? It was so intense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember you now. How's your brother? He's dead. Oh. Oh, right. Right. Right, right, right. Connecting everything together now. Uh, mm. That's too bad. <sighs> Sorry. I'm just really a mess right now. My assistant went equity and moved to New York, so I have to be like a solo act now, which just sucks. I have to do all my fortune telling on Zoom and seeing myself on camera all the time is exacerbating my already considerable self-image issues. I've been quarantined thirst texting this guy and we used to work together at Crazy Mocha and I saved his number. Well, he didn't like give me his number. I just like Googled it and I texted him and we were supposed to go on a Zoom date. Well, it's not supposed to be like a date date. He was just supposed to join this call and cast the show and see how awesomely cool I am. And then maybe we could go into a breakout room and talk about other things. But he totally ghosted me. I got fired from another day job. They're going to shut off my lights. And I'm totally questioning my artistic purpose because I haven't felt creatively inspired for like a year. And oh, my God. Therapy session later. Seance now. Now, I want you to call my brother, and when he shows up, I want you to- Men don't show up. They don't give a damn. They want you to think they'll show up. They'll wink at you while you're making a chocolate frappe and then pretend like you don't exist. Look, I am trying to be patient, but you are really pissing me off. I need my brother. Well, he doesn't need you. Believe me, from what I remember of Jeff, he's your typical straight dude, totally not engaged with other people's emotions. He's sitting around in the afterlife eating chips and watching the buckos toss around the old pigskin. He does not care about your grief, and he is not coming back. Gina, just remove him from the call. Do you want me to find his address and kill him? I haven't killed someone in so long. Whoa. What is wrong with you? Me? Excuse me, bitch? Yeah, like, why am I getting such intense vibes off of you? Were you, like, with Jeff when he died? What? Like, something is just screaming at me right now through the screen. It's so weird. You were thinking about Allison's roommate, aka the bitch who murdered my brother? She was the last thing Jeff saw before he died. You sure about that? Like, 101%. Okay, okay. Well, either way, I'm getting vibes. This is, this is something to work with here. Huh, okay. Maybe, maybe I'm not finished yet. <laughs> Let's get started. The next visitation is almost upon us, ladies and gentlemen. I can feel it. Close your eyes. Let's all concentrate together, bringing the Pittsburgh spirits close. Jeff, Jeff Moore, bartender of the now defunct Brillo Box, purveyor of so many spirits to the sad, the lonely, and bereft. You are now but a spirit yourself. Speak to us, speak to us from beyond. Tell us you are here. I'm getting something. I hear him. He's speaking to me. He's saying, 
Way to go, Sydney. That's what I'm talking about. Huh? Oh my God, that's him. Sydney is a hockey guy. He's watching hockey. Oh. See, what did I tell you? You don't honestly believe this, do you? Allison, come on, he's making it all up. Speak again, no oh hockey-loving one. You are needed here in this mortal realm. Oh my God. I have another message. Another message from Jeff from the great beyond. He says, he says... Yes, Logan, with that hat trick. What the fuck? He's watching the Pens game. He's not even paying attention to you. Oh, what a douche. Of course he is. See what I mean? Typical straight dude. We're going to have to try something else. Pittsburgh spirits, help me now. Bring Jeff off of his otherworldly couch so that he can come see his sister. Oh, they found him in the river, right? Uh, um, yes, but like... I don't like to talk about it because I have really bad PTSD from seeing my dead brother after he was pulled out of the river. But this is just what we need. Jeff's soul is trapped in our waterways. We need Pittsburgh spirits whose souls are attached to the three rivers to usher him back. And I know just the ghost to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a story. A story you've never heard before because the government kept it secret. Decades ago, a plane crashed in the Monongahela River. Yeah, yeah, it, the B-25, it was carrying alien showgirls, or no, or like alien blood, or, or something, and the government covered it up because they didn't want anyone to know about it. Wrong. Congratulations, all of that was wrong. This is the real story. Once. Long ago, a B-52 bomber plane crashed in the Mon River. Years later, a rock band named themselves the B-52 specifically after this crashed plane, but I digress. The government covered up this crash because that plane contained a salacious scandal. You see, one of their Air Force pilots had hijacked the plane for personal reasons, hoping to flee to Paris where he and his lover might live a freer, more open life. The 1950s were not kind to men like this pilot. This pilot had fallen in love with his barista. His male barista. With cute male barista who was a little nerdy, a little squirrely, but who had a fun, sassy personality, which anyone might discover if they bothered to meet him for a Zoom call and not stand him up. This pilot was madly in love with this quirky barista with offbeat charm, and so they flew away into the sky, believing that there was a place for them somewhere, a place for them, peace and quiet and open air. But the fates rejected this pilot and this barista's plea for tolerance. The plane encountered turbulence and crashed in the Monongahela. The pilot and the barista lost their lives. The government recovered them and buried them in an unmarked grave, and they were lost to history. I call now upon Winston and Matt, the pilot and the barista, to bring Jeff back from the netherworld. I I'm sorry, please save all questions for the post-show talkback. I call now upon yes, I the pilot... I have a little bit of clarification on what you just said. No, I'm sorry. I don't do audience participation anymore. No, no, I, I don't want to participate. But I just think it should be pointed out that a lot of that wasn't exactly accurate. Excuse me? I, I, I'm sorry. I, I really, I, I feel rude for doing this, but I'm a city archivist. So I, I just want to make sure this stuff is accurate. And um, You're questioning my integrity. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that there's no uh, factual basis for what you're saying. Uh, but you, you see, the, the plane was actually on a cross-country training flight, and most of the crew survived. As you said, it was the 50s, so the military was on high alert because of the Cold War. I'm trying to call the spirits, and you completely interrupted my flow. Oh, no, 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 please, go on. This is so fun. <laughs> it's goddamn revelatory is what it is. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, can I continue? Go for it. 
Okay? Okay. Great. So, let's call on the spirits of the river. The oh, wait. Uh, it, actually, it was a B-25, not a B-52. Yeah, Gina was right. Sorry. Sorry. I interrupted you. Are you one of those Zoom bombers? Do I need to bounce you out of this call? You're not going to start showing porn, are you? God, no. <laughs> no, I'll be quiet from not. I, I, I promise. I, sorry. Right. Well, since the B-52, sorry, B-25 story is ruined, let's move on to another story of a river spirit who may help us bring Jack back from a watery afterlife. I call now upon the spirit of the mighty river monster who dwells in the Monongahela River, the spirit known as Ogwa, the mighty Oh river. yeah, the river monster, I know her. She used to come into the bar, hung out, we had some laughs. Excuse me, I'm talking. Well, I'm just saying we already know her story and you don't have to tell it again. Just move on to the part where you get my brother back. Thanks. Oh my God, I'm working on it. But again, you are completely 100% wrong. Ogwa the River Monster does not frequent bars. Ogwa hates bars. And Ogwa the River Monster is not a she. For you see, Ogwa was not always a river monster. He was once a man. A sad, gay man. Oh my God. Ogwa the River Monster in Pittsburgh during the 1970s, just as gay people were starting to taste a little bit of freedom. Pride parades were emerging. Gay rights was just becoming a thing. But still, Owa felt alone. I mean, you think gay guys have it tough now? They didn't even have apps back then. They literally just had to meet at bars and stuff. They actually had to talk to each other face to face. But Ova was just this skinny dude who didn't feel comfortable in his body. How was he going to attract anyone's attention? So he did the only thing he knew to do. He started this totally awesome fortune-telling business. But you know what? Even though his showmanship was unparalleled and his fortunes were always 100% dead on, he couldn't get any clients. And this was like how he was counting on meeting potential boyfriends. So he offered up his soul to the devil in exchange for some attention from some cute guys. But Satan struck a cruel bargain. He transformed Owa into a hideous river creature, attracting lots of attention from all the cute guys canoeing along the river, but the wrong kind of attention. Every time you swam up to say hi to them, they'd scream and paddle away, even though Owa's totally a charming guy once you get past his offbeat appearance and get to know him. Fuck, men are the worst. I'm sorry. Um... No, don't, don't you start. No, I just, I, I just want to help out because there were some inaccuracies. Uh... I have done thorough research. This is a real story, so, dude. Oh no, I, I have no doubt that it is, but that's not actually the story of Ogwa. Oh my God. Do you want to take over my presentation? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. If I could have a few minutes to provide some additional context and insight. Uh, what? So Ogwa was actually a Native American myth dating back long before the 1970s. They, they told these stories of a 20 foot long, 500 pound turtle with these huge jaws that could just swallow a child in one gulp. So gross and so awesome. Where are you getting this? Well, it's actually some pretty great material in our archives on myths from uh, indigenous peoples of Western Pennsylvania uh, and West Virginia. See, what's cool about Ogwa is that the myth is really, it really has a social purpose. It's warning children to stay away from the river's edge so they wouldn't fall in. It's not so much a myth about unjustified fear or something harmless, it's a justified fear of something to be wary of. Okay, okay. What's your name, buddy? Oh, Josh. Josh, hi, Mystic Mass, nice to meet you. Josh, what I'm trying to do here is call on spirits. When you tell us they're not real, those spirits get kind of offended. No spirits, no dead brother coming back from the grave. I'm, I'm sorry. May I continue? Yeah, I, I apologize. I just thought that the spirits might want to show up more if their stories were told more accurately. That's all. Put yourself on mute. Sure, no problem. Yeah, sorry. 
The last Pittsburgh spirit I will call upon is none other than Fred Williams, the man who drove off the bridge to nowhere. Oh, I love the story, <laughs> and it's totally accurate so far, so good job. Not many remember it now, but the Fort Duquesne Bridge was unfinished for many years. Bureaucratic red tape kept the project in limbo, so the bridge just stopped 100 feet over the Allegheny River, earning it the nickname, the Bridge to Nowhere. Did Fred Williams know it was a bridge to nowhere? That night he drove his aunt's 1959 Dodge station wagon through the barricade at the end of the bridge and landed upside down at the river's edge. Or did he drive through that barricade fully believing that it was a bridge to somewhere? somewhere beyond his pain and his loneliness and his fear of being one of those single gay guys that just collects a lot of cats. A bridge to the sweet release of death. I know in my heart it's the latter. And so I call to Fred Williams, asking him to hear my plea, bring Gina's brother back to us. Fred, I pray that you are at peace, but I must ask you to muster your spiritual strength and convince Jeff to stop watching hockey in the afterlife. That Fred, oh mighty river spirit, move beyond your pain and speak. Oh, what? Uh, Fred is still alive. You're shitting me. Not at all. Fred Williams survived the crash. He didn't even sustain major injuries. That's not true. I, I can't tell why. Isn't that wonderful? No, no, I refuse to believe it. He died in that crash. He had to. You don't just survive shit like that. But he did. No, he was driving, he was going in one direction, he knew he wasn't going to turn around, and he died in a euphoric blaze of beautiful tragedy. That's the story. We, we really don't know why he drove off the bridge, but he ended up going to medical school and actually had a long career as an oncologist. No! More of a funny footnote for a very productive and joyful life. No! How is that possible? I like to think of the story as being you know, emblematic of the resilience of the human spirit. You disgust me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you're taking all my stories away from me, Josh. Thanks for that. Gina, I can't help you. Damn it. Matt, please just just try for me. Yeah, please. I, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. No, oh my God, guys. He doesn't want to do it. Just leave him alone. No, no. I'll show you. I'll show all of you what a pathetic waste of time this is. Men don't show up. You call them and call them and call them, and they leave you wasted and sobbing on your bathroom rug at three o'clock in the morning. Here we go. Jeff, please. I know you're having a good time wherever you are. I know you're perfectly happy on your own. But your sister needs you. She's alone. She's scared. She doesn't know where you are. She wants someone to talk to. She needs someone to care about her day. Now that Brilla Box is gone and life as we know it is ending. Someone to complain to about her job search or reminisce about weird bar patrons with. Someone to spend holidays with. Someone to talk to about Lizzo's TikTok videos, <laughs> where she hopes she'll be in five years, or where she's scared she'll be in five years. Jeff, talk to your sister. Right. I'm out. Wait. Okay. I can't believe that didn't work. I told you. I can't believe he's really gone. It's just not fucking fair. Gina. 
Sorry about your brother. Thanks. Yeah. Um, do you know if there's actually going to be a talk back? I don't think so, dude. That's too bad. Um, like, I don't, I mean, this is weird, but I hope you don't think I'm creepy or anything, but do, do you like have Mystic Matt's number? Huh? I, it's just, that was oh, so great. What a great show. And I, I was just thinking he might want to, you know, uh, oh, the Netflix party, some uh, ghost shows or something, or, or just text, you know, because I know, I know a lot about Pittsburgh and maybe I could tell him some stuff he could use in his act, right? Uh, I'll text you his number. <laughs> and, and thanks for inviting me again. Yeah. It was such a great night. I, mean, I, I really gave up on connecting with new people in the last couple months, but wow, you just, you, you never know who you might meet. <laughs> what a couple of weirdos. James going to no one. What? What? Oh, hey, Gina. It was a hell of a game. What did you talk to me about? Holy shit. Gina? Gina, are you okay? Allison. Uh, hi. What's up? Nothing. Good to see ya. Yeah, I'm um I'm gonna end the call now. Talk to you later. 